Welcome to another Bites of Bread from St. John in the Center. I'm Pastor Shell, walking you through some of those minor festivals of the church here. That means today we're going to look ahead to October 18th, when the church remembers St. Luke. But before we dive into St. Luke's life, we're actually going to spend a little time thinking about our own lives. As we do so, maybe you've noticed that sometimes Christians inadvertently divide their lives into almost two different, different compartments. You know, when it comes to our religion or our faith, maybe you have fond memories of, of uh, your childhood, even going to Sunday school, seeing the, the flannel graph, they would, they would call these things, where they would put up pictures of what happened in Jesus' life. But then we'd go back to our regular life during the week, and maybe even during college or high school, you, you had a chemistry class. And you viewed these different things as almost separate parts of your life, as if one was dealing more with traditions, things that maybe meant a lot to you, but the other one was dealing with more facts, with things that were dependable. And so again, inadvertently, we might end up, in a sense, dividing our heart. We might have this division where we have what was private, what's personal to me, but then we have what we talk about when we go outside of our house, what we'll talk with our friends about at school or with the other employees about on the job. We have what is fiction and what we think is, is fact. And again, some of these things we might say, well, it's true, but it's really only true for me. Other people might have a different take on things, and that's, that's fine as well. And if there's anyone that we especially expect to have this, this opinion where certain things might make you feel good, be, be helpful to help cope through life and even face death, other things are more dependable and fact-based. fact, fact based. And you would almost expect that, that a doctor like this would be somebody who would approach life in this way. When it comes to doctors, we want them to trust science. We want them to say this is generally what these symptoms that you have mean. We've tested these procedures or these treatments. We know that they can be successful and you can expect these results if you undergo these treatments. You don't want them to make up stories or just simply tell things that make you feel good. They want you, to, you want them to tell it as it is, to give it to you straight, to not embellish things to make you feel better but to be the most reliable people in your life. Because often when it comes to a doctor, it's a matter of life and death. Well, that takes us back to what we're thinking about today with Luke. So it is pretty well assured that Luke wrote the gospel that we have associated with his name. In fact, there's no actual part of, the, of that book that says it was written by Luke, but you go all the way back to 75 AD. So we're talking right after Jesus left. And there, this book was already being clearly attributed to him. So who is this Luke guy that wrote this book of the Bible? Well, if you would hop over to Colossians 4, verse 14, we hear this passing reference where it says, Luke, the dearly loved doctor, greets you as does Demas. So Luke, the guy who wrote this gospel, would have been a doctor. When it comes to Luke being a doctor, you would expect him to be someone then who would be reliable, who would be interested in facts, things that were trustworthy. And that's interesting because when we encounter Luke's gospel, we encounter things that, that maybe aren't exactly what we would expect. We hear about uh, John the Baptist's parents finding out that in their old age, they would get to have a child. We hear about Mary having an angel visit her and then her accepting that truth. That's followed by even more angelic visitors. As Jesus' ministry gets underway, we see miraculous healings. Demons are driven out. The dead have been raised. And then this book culminates with Jesus' own verified, witnessed, historical death and resurrection, which is then followed with his ascension into heaven. As far as Luke, the physician, was concerned, these were facts that were true, trustworthy, and life-changing. You see that in the introduction to his book, as you look at the gospel that's appointed for this service. There it says, many have undertaken to compile an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, an account like those handed down to us by those who were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word from the beginning. For this reason, it seemed good to me also, since I followed everything closely from the beginning, to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you were taught. Remember earlier how we talked about this division between what's private and public, what's fact, and what's fiction. But, but Luke the Evangelist doesn't say that there are these separate categories. In fact, in Luke's Gospel, we see that that division disappears 
there aren't things that are just private. There aren't truths that are just fiction that we encounter in the Bible. But when Luke tells us the story of who Jesus is, what happened to him and, and what it means to us, all that we are left with is what's public and what is factual and trustworthy. He doesn't promote it as just his own take of reality. It's not just his brand of spirituality. He presents it as objective truth from eyewitnesses. So this means something. If Luke really announced peace to all mankind at his birth, that's something that, well, we need to share. And if Jesus really forgives sins, we need to tell other people about that. Jesus is able to raise the dead. Those who are scared to die need to hear about that. If Jesus' tomb really was empty on Easter morning, we have something that is worth telling. Yes, Luke is known as being a doctor, but that's not it. He is known primarily as Luke the Evangelist. When he uncovered the truths, the facts, the history of what happened in Jesus' life, that was something that needed to be told and shared with people. That was even more a matter of life and death than, than any medical care that, that Luke would give. So let's join Luke. Join Luke in celebrating the facts of what happened in Jesus' life but also realizing that because it's not just true for us, it's true for others. This is something that we don't just keep to ourselves. It's not just private. But we become evangelists. We tell the good news like Luke and let everybody know who Jesus is and what he means for them. We'll close then with the prayer of the day for this festival. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician to reveal in his gospel the light, the love and healing power of your son. Grant that by hearing and believing your word, we may be healed of all sin and serve you with willing hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thanks for taking the time to celebrate the Festival of Luke the Evangelist with me. God's blessings on your week.